All right, all right, all right. Guide my steps, I like it. Thank you. What's that? Yes. So, uh, lots to talk about today. Uh, before I get into it too far and get into my message, which is going to be kind of one of those ones that, uh, you know, it's, it's leading up to uh, a message for, tomorrow, for next week, so they connect together. We're going to start talking about spiritual gifts. Uh, but some of the things I want to kind of highlight with, with everyone real quick is, uh, we didn't mention it yet, and it was, didn't get in the bulletin, but next Saturday, or Sunday, sorry, right after church, we're going to have a, uh, a quick business meeting to discuss the uh, HVAC. Uh, the finances and vote on whether we should go ahead and purchase it now because as it so happens we actually have some of the finances enough to purchase the unit itself and almost enough to uh, we'll, we'll talk about all of that in detail next week so if you're a member and you can stick around next week after church we'll remind you again but it's very very important and uh, the Lord provides amen? amen he always does and I was not worried about him bringing the finances but they're not all here yet but he's he's moving right along with all of that, because he, he owns it all anyway, doesn't he? Amen. So uh, I appreciate you guys saying amen to that, because it's true. Uh, I want to highlight women's retreat. I feel like I haven't done enough justice to it. Uh, I pushed when I was a youth pastor, and I talked about uh, winter camps and summer camps and whatever camps for kids to get away, and a time to just unplug from this nutty world, seriously, and go to a place that is just completely different where the, scene, the scenery is different, you're in God's country for sure, you look around at all the, all the wilderness around you, and you're in a place just with a lot of other ladies who want to be there too, and they just want to worship Jesus together. It, it's it's, it's life-altering in many times, and I would encourage you, if you've not ever been to a ladies' retreat, this is, don't miss this one. We haven't gone together in a long time, as far as to Sugar Pine, right? It's been a long time, and uh, it just kind of worked out to where this is perfect. Uh, if you can go... Your next steps would be to go out to the, ta to the table at the Welcome Center and uh, talk to Ms. Kelly or whoever's out there. They'll give you more information about it. You can register online and then trust God to provide the finances if you need help. We'll do what we can, but uh, we've got a little bit of help, but not a lot. So maybe there's somebody else that'll continue to provide something for, put it on their hearts to try and send some ladies that need to go. But I can't say it enough. The women's retreat is, it's, it's any retreat to get away is amazing. And on top of that, we're going to have the all-church church retreat, I guess would be a way to put it, in the, in the winter coming December 9th, 7th through the 9th for all of us to go there. We'll still have a service here, but there might be a lot less of us in here because hopefully we're all going to be down on the coast. It's going to be a max of 100 and I think we said 125, didn't we say, Jared? I can't, we haven't really decided completely, but per family, there's going to be a max. But it's $50 per person up to a certain point. So let's just say you have six people. You won't pay $50 for all six people. You'll pay a certain amount for everybody to go because uh, we recognize that it can be kind of costly and this is one that we can control the cost because we're doing this ourselves this is our own church retreat we've rented out Camp Yeager and it's one that we can provide the food for ourselves and the speaking and it's just gonna be a fantastic weekend of just getting away to the coast and uh, if you've not been before you need to go we just enjoy each other's company and it's God's company with us all together so anytime you could have an excuse to get away to be with church family I think you should take it uh, and that's what this is all about. Just us all getting together, connecting to one another. That's what we want to do is we want to connect to each other, connect to God and connect to one another. It's very important. You can see all the rest of the announcements on here, but I want to make sure I just recall because David Carmona's Bible study is starting back up. It just started Monday. Just make sure you guys know about that. If you'd like to know information, maybe he or Misty or somebody will be out back there. You can look at it and see where to go, where his address is. Same with Bo and Laura's. The Wednesday night Bible study over here in the big room is on Wednesday nights. So many others that we'd like to tell you about. Ladies' Bible studies, men's Bible studies. Uh, it's just too much to go over here, so you can stop at the Welcome Center out there, and we'd love to go over that with you. That's your next step for that, too. Uh, and don't forget about the business meeting. That was a lot to say. <sighs> Let's get our breath. Um, one of the things, if, if I could do it all the whole hour, whatever we have, I would talk about it. But 9-11, the anniversary, 9-11, September 11th, uh, the tragedy at the World Trade Center, I was there this, this summer. I meant to put some pictures that I took of the museum. I didn't get them on the screen there. I did watch a movie yesterday, just coincidentally with that. Uh, if you, the worst part about 9-11 is we all, adults, remember it. 
We all know where we were the day it happened. We all know the day, you can cue it up, Misty, when we're going to show it in just a second. We all know the day, the hour, the minute that when we found out where we were. Most of us can remember it. I know exactly where I was. I was 15 minutes from the Pentagon. Uh, so I know exactly how it felt. I know how ominous it was. Uh, sometimes being here, uh, yeah, 38 or 39, okay? Past those guys. Um, but this was a movie made by, I guess, Oliver Stone, but I'd never heard of it before called World Trade Center, and the ending was just phenomenal. It's about two firefighters, or not, sorry, uh, Port Authority cops who end up going over there. No, don't start it yet, please. And uh, end up going over there, and uh, they get trapped. And it's about their whole ordeal in the World Trade Center. So if you haven't seen it, you should, you should watch it. It's one of those movies that we, we have Kleenexes, be ready, because this 9-11 this, uh, is deeply personal to me. Um, but what I was getting at before is we all remember, but our kids that were born, either were young or born after, they, they don't know anything of it. They don't know the, the historical significance of it. They don't know the, the damage. And they don't even know the unity that was created after 9-11 and during 9-11, which is more important to me than talking about the evil that day because evil still exists to this day. And this movie highlights the goodness in people and the goodness that comes out of tragedy. So I'd just like to you see this. This is just going to, it's just kind of ending up. Uh, they, these two guys have been rescued. And this is just the ending title to the movie. And it's just kind of touching to me. If you haven't seen it, maybe it won't affect you like it did me, but maybe it will. We'll see. Can we hit the lights, David? showed us what human beings are capable of the evil yeah sure but it also brought out the goodness we forgot could exist people taking care of each other for no other reason than it was the right thing to do it's important for us to talk about that good Remember. If she wasn't here, I wouldn't be here. Hi, how are you? Because I saw a lot of it that day. Olivia, you coming?
It's one of those things that we don't think about much anymore. We don't give it enough thought. We don't pray about it. We don't talk to the Lord about it. We don't cry out to him for the goodness. But the one thing that came through 9-11, the one thing that you can turn it off now, the one thing that happened after the whole tragedy, after all of it, is the stories that you heard of people coming together to help one another. The stories that you heard of all of the people who survived it uh, and the families who are trying to survive it still to this day. Don't make no mistake, they are still affected by this. Their loved ones are gone forever, but they want to move on. So I would like to, as we get ready for offering and as we pray, I'd like you guys to pray with me for uh, all of those affected by this. Uh, all of us, it's, it's an American thing. It's, not a, it's a worldwide thing because not just Americans died in that. People from all over the world died. And people from all over the world were praying for, for us and, you know, sending condolences and sending help and sending all kinds of things. And um, America needs that kind of unity again. The world needs that kind of unity in a, in a certain sort of way that uh, I know that only the Lord can bring. Uh, unity that brings so, so people so tight that no matter what division comes through, it can be defeated, which is something that we're going to talk a little bit about today. So as the guys come forward for offering... Uh, I'd like to pray about that. And if you'd like to just kind of, I'm going to pray right here at the altar. So if you'd like to, after the guys start taking the offering, after we pray for that, um, if you'd like to come up with me and join me and pray for this Tuesday, specifically it's Tuesday, 9-11. It's the anniversary of it. I can't remember what year it is. To me it doesn't matter because every year is important to remember it. Um, if nothing more than just remember what it means to us and, and how we should never forget the, the memory of those who died and the memory of those who survived as well uh, because there's a lot of people still suffering through a lot of things from the illnesses and the cancers and different things from the dust and, the, and the, everything that they inhaled from that day. You know, it was, it was pretty, pretty rough for everybody. So uh, I'm going to pray on my knees. If you want to come up and prepare with me, that's fine. If you don't, pray right where you are for the families. So, Lord, I just come to you this morning, and I'm, it's one of those days where I feel kind of melancholy. Your spirit just works overtime on my heart. Maybe it's just from watching this movie and, or thinking about all the events that happened that day and, and, the, and the amount of people who came into church on that specific day and the week following and seeking you, God. And I wonder this day if that, if that would happen again, if people would come together through certain sort of tragedy of, of that case. But Father, I pray that it wouldn't take that for us to come together as one. Uh, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of problems around the world. There's a lot of problems in our country, and there's a lot of people fighting each other. There's a lot of people shouting each other down over the sake of politics and feelings rather than loving one another through their differences. Lord, may, may we as, as followers of you focus on your goodness and your will and your way and how you want us to, do, to go about treating each other and other people who may not be in our church. Lord, may you show us how you want us to live. May we live that way, albeit maybe not perfectly, but in your will and in your way. And so, Lord, I pray for this offering that we're about to receive. It's just a little bit that we can give back to you. God, may you use it. May you bless others with it. May we do exactly as you ask. Lord, I pray for the rest of this service this morning. I pray that you would empty me of myself, fill me with you, God. Take any weakness out of my body and fill it with your strength. I know you can do this, and I trust you with this, God. The same for everyone in here. I pray that you'd empty every one of themselves. Fill them with your spirit, God. Show them exactly what they are to hear from your word today, because you say your word will never return void. There's something in the word for all of us. God, direct and guide us and, and meet us where we are this day. In Jesus' precious and holy and healing name, I pray, and we all say, amen. amen. Thank you, Al. So, we're going to start talking about spiritual gifts today. And it's not going to be exactly how you might think, because I want to set it up, because so many people want to jump into, I want a spiritual gift. They, they, there's, there's talents that God gives us naturally when we're born. Uh, I'm amazed at Courtney how she can play the drums. That's just, I love to tap on things, but to stand in front, sit in front of you guys and do that, no way. Uh, I love to sing, and sometimes my mic gets left on, and sometimes I hear myself, I'm like, oop, and turn it off. We all have a different talent, and that's different than the gifts that God gives us at the day that we're reborn by the Spirit. 
There's specific gifts that are given to us for different reasons, which we'll discuss a little bit today, and more in depth next week. And for some reason, just like many other things, it has a way of dividing churches, denominations, along denominational lines, and just it, it's one of those things that we, as church people, have decided that we're going to grab a hold of and divide and conquer and say, well, I'm better than you and you're better than me kind of thing. And we miss the whole point of spiritual gifts when we do that. Uh, we're not going to go through the entire list of spiritual gifts today. That's going to be next week, and maybe we won't make it through it all next week because uh, really what needs to happen is that we need to all perhaps take a spiritual gifts test, which they have out there, and I don't know of any better one than another, which I'll investigate a little bit more. But the idea is, that's a good Toby Mac song, the idea is uh, knowing, kind of understanding who we are in God, in Christ, and what he's called us to do because our calling goes along with our gifting, if, that's a, if that makes any sense. I never thought that I would be a pastor standing in front of people speaking, which this is the easier part, I'll be honest with you. The rest of the week is really hard for various reasons. And so there's a lot of gifts that come along with that that only come from God. And so the same thing for you, and I don't know if you have, have any of you ever thought about spiritual gifts? Has any of you ever even considered it? Anybody else at, at all thought about spiritual gifts or what they are, or who they, where they come from, or any of that stuff? I'm glad to see your hands go up because it's one of those things that um, I don't necessarily know if we take it for granted or we just don't, I don't know, we just don't investigate it and find out exactly. And then we, and then we wonder why we can't find purpose in our life. We can't figure out what it is that God wants us to do. And so I, to, I put on here... I hate titling sermons sometimes because that just doesn't fit it sometimes. But so you want a spiritual gift, right? Uh, a lot of us, we, we want that thing, man. It's, it's, it's uh, I desperately want to have it. And Paul deals with this. And it's, it's, he, he doesn't just deal with it right here, but the most extensive way he deals with it is in Corinthians. Uh, Corinthians was a really damaged church. They had a lot of garbage going on in their church. Stuff I don't even want to get into all right now, but... Uh, Paul had to deal with a lot of stuff, and he had to set them straight in a lot of areas. And one of them was spiritual gifts, and one of them was the way they, they do worship and, and, and how the order of things go. And so he stops right here, and next week, I, can't, I really can't wait till next week, so I'm kind of already thinking about it, so it might even plop into my brain. But he says there's something more important than, than the gifts that we get, which we'll get to. But I wanted to talk a little bit about today and spiritual gifts. Uh, and we need to understand what they are because some of the things, the first question for me personally is, what in the world is a spiritual gift? I mean, I don't know if, if people consider or think about that or whatever the terminology is or whatever, the, but what is it? So, I don't know if this thing's going to work. Red or green? Green. Green go. Ah, oh, yeah, look at that. To understand spiritual gifts... We must first know these things right here. The first thing is we need to know who and where these spiritual gifts come from. It's not mysterious. It's not mystical. And they come from a specific place. And I think you guys have already figured it out. That, that place, that person is God, ultimately through the Holy Spirit, gifting from inside. The Holy Spirit living inside of us and gifting us and giving each of us who knows us, who, by the way, knows us better than we know ourselves, so he knows exactly how to gift us and exactly what to do and exactly where to go. Um, but knowing exactly where they come from is key. And it's, it's interesting because in Corinthians, uh, the Corinthian church was just led astray so many times in so many places because there was so much false religion in Corinth. There's a lot of false worship. And might I say, that's exactly like today. Is there not a lot of false worship today? in a lot of areas. As a matter of fact, there's a lot of people who worship the gift and not the gift giver. And that's an important distinguishing part, is to worship the gift giver, not the gift itself. Because if we worship the gift that we want to get or that we have, we're, we're not really doing exactly what we're supposed to be doing. So understanding where, who and where they came from is extremely important. So if you don't mind, open your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. As always, I like to read the chapters a little bit, and I want to do that with you. Uh, context is important, so that's why we always read through it. 
this is, I wanted to, to just go from 1 to 12, but it, it, it kind of, you have to do the whole thing together. So we're going to kind of overlap in some of the areas from this week to next week and vice versa. So, but we're going to just go to, oh, sorry, 1 to 11, I think. And we'll touch on 12 a little bit, but we're not going to read all of it. So, 1 Corinthians, let me go back so you can see it. There it is. That says Acts. You know what I was thinking about? I was thinking about tonight. I was studying for tonight, this morning, or whenever I was writing this, and I put Acts. I even looked up Acts 12, and I went, wait a minute, that's not right. Oh, it's in 1 Corinthians. Excuse me for that. 1 Corinthians. See, I'm not perfect. By far not perfect. Uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm right there with you, brother. I, I will say there's one thing that happens to me on Saturday nights more times than often than not is the spiritual attack on me. Uh, it hits me, and more, more Saturdays I are sleepless than any other day of the week. Uh, I stay up late thinking, not on purpose, but the spirit kind of stirs me, and then, I, then the wrong spirit kind of comes around and harasses me, and you think, hey, you'd be used to that. And, and I sort of am, and I sort of not. I'm not immune to it. And so kind of part of this is maybe the, the tiredness, but uh, it is 1 Corinthians, which is after this, way after this, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. So that didn't help you at all. So let's read it together. And I'm reading from the NIV. You may have a different version. They all pretty much say the same, just about. Now about spiritual gifts, brothers, understand he doesn't mean just men. He means everybody. I do not want you to be ignorant. You know that when you were pagans, somehow or other, you were influenced and led astray to mute idols. Therefore, I tell you that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus, be cursed. And no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of workings, but the same God works all of them in all men. Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given to the, for the common good. To one, there is given through the Spirit the message of wisdom. To another, the message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit. You're hearing some of the, the, the gifts right now. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by that one Spirit. To another, miraculous powers. To another, prophecy. To another, distinguishing between spirits. And to another, speaking in different kinds of tongues. And to an, still another, the interpretation of tongues. And all of these work of one and of the same Spirit. He gives them to each one just as He determines. Now, we tend to stop and focus just on those gifts rather than the purpose of the gifts and the gift giver. So he says, Paul says, I don't want you to be ignorant of these things. I don't want you to go astray, and I don't want you to worship the gift, not the gift giver. And I want you to look at who it is that gave this gift, and that is God himself. Through the Holy Spirit, this gift comes strictly from God. It's not something that we're born with in a sense of natural birth. It's a spiritual birth that we're born with it. And it's also a gift that we have to develop. It's one you have to use just like any other gift or talent, you might say. Playing music, playing football, baseball, whatever. Anything we do has to be exercised and done over and over and over again. We have to work it out. Now, the, the cool thing about the spiritual gifts, though, is that the wherewithal and the strength doesn't come from inside of us, or who we are, but it comes from the Spirit of God. That power, whatever it is that you have, whatever gift you have, whether it be speaking in tongues, whether it be interpreting tongues, whether it be healings, whatever it is, that is not you doing that gift, by the way. You are not doing that. It's all from the Spirit of God, not your own. Now, a lot of people, we're going to get into all those breakdowns of all the different gifts and, and where and what and who says what and how, if they're still here or not here, if they left or not left or whatever, and all those arguments. But the point is this. You need to understand who the gift giver is, and it is Jesus Christ through God, the Holy Spirit, all in one. That might be a little confusing, but there's the Trinity that we worship, that we have, God the, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. They are one working in the same. But in this case, pardon me, in this case, the Holy Spirit is the one who gives the gift and distributes the gifts. See, each part of the Trinity has a job to do, and this is his part. But it all comes from God, because they are all God. Amen? 
And so we cannot be ignorant about it. We must first acknowledge that they come from the one true God and through the Spirit within us. And we might go, well, how can we test whether this is true or not? Well, he gives us a simple test right here. It's pretty simple. And you can look at your lives, and it's those, if you know or if you curse Jesus, well, that's a pretty clue, pretty big clue that you probably don't have him. Because why would you curse the one who saved you? You see, there's a lot of people out there, and when I say curse, not just, it might not just be a blatant, hey, I curse you, Jesus, but in how you worship him and how you serve him. You know, we can claim to serve Jesus and do it profanely. We can claim to serve Jesus and do it the wrong way because we're, we're trying to live the life, but we're not living the life, if that makes any sense. We're faking it. There's a lot of people that go to church, have gone to church for a long time, and they know they can, they can live the life, I guess, because they've been around it long enough, they can fake it, and they can fool people to a point, but it gets to a certain point where you can't anymore. And it gets to a point where your, your deeds are truly exposed, and those things that we do, the things that we say in the places and how we act will show how we truly care about Jesus. Now, here's the other, here's the kicker so you can know one of the bigger tests is, do you claim that Jesus is Lord truly? I wrote down, and, and Jared does this stuff on purpose, I think. I don't know. Maybe not. The Spirit of God does it. That song that we just sang, I was going to have you put it back on, but I just wrote the verses, the, the lyrics down. If more of you means less of me, take everything. And that's perfect for exactly what this is. Take everything. Being Lord of your life means he controls it. Not just controls it and like, well, yeah, he'd be the best one to control your life, but he's the one who guides it, which is probably why God told you to write this. Guide my steps. Noray put her, I, I didn't realize she was actually wearing, those are shoes she was wearing, so I picked them up, man. I, I, I'm not gonna, I gotta wash my hands first, just kidding. But she put, the, her, she put this in her, in her sandals and put them in front of me, and it was kind of like walking, you know, and it said, guide my steps, which only God does those things. The Spirit of God, that's a gift, by the way. It's a gift of, of, of discernment. It's a gift of, some people would call it different things, but we'll, I don't want to get too far ahead of myself, but thank you for that. Perfect example of what God does and how the Holy Spirit works. But I want to ask you, I'm going to get down on your level for a minute, because sometimes I feel like I'm talking over and at you instead of with you, and I hate that. Do you ever feel lost? Seriously. Do you ever feel like, hey, what, what am I supposed to do today, God? I, I don't... I don't, I don't know where to go. I don't know what to say. I don't know, and, and I don't feel it today. That doesn't necessarily mean that you don't have the Spirit of God in you. That just means you're being sensitive to his leading and calling. But think about your week. We all have those weeks. Think about the things that you do, and, and where, what's your go-to when you feel distressed? What's your, what's your go-to? Who is your go-to? That's your test. That's your test. Now, I wish it was as black and white as I'm making it. It's just not. You see, because a lot of us will still fail, but we know that we can turn back to him and say, God, the point about him being Lord of your life is that when, you, when the Spirit reminds you or prompts you, you turn to him. We have the same Spirit and the same God. You heard... You heard Paul say it how many times in this, in this one place? Same spirit, same, 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 same. We all have the same spirit. We're the same God. And because of that, we need to rely on him. And underneath of that, in verses 4 to 6, we see where he talks about this very important thing. He says there are different kinds of gifts, but the same spirit. The, the gist behind this is, the Spirit gives it. You don't choose it. No one gift is better than another. No one gift is superior to another. Without going into detail, this isn't even an exhausted, exhaustive list of the gifts in 1 Corinthians. You have to look in other places. I believe it's, uh, I have them all written down in Ephesians, I think, and a couple other spots where Paul discusses it again. And you have to bring all the gifts into play. But no one gift is superior to another. And then I wrote down, hence, no one person is superior to another. 
that's the get go right there is that we think that we're more superior than we're, we're better than someone else because we have this or we do this and if that's what you're doing then Jesus is not Lord of your life at that moment I guess you see because there are different kinds of service if you read it right here with me there are different kinds of gifts but the same spirit there are different kinds of service but the same Lord it all comes from God it's not mysterious it's not hard to figure out everything we get every gift is from God and because of that he gives us all different kinds of service we can't all be the same that would be boring by the way if I was just like you you'd probably be bored of me and if I was like you were like me oh man you'd be crazy you'll get that in a second we're all different and therefore we all have different types of gifts and the purpose of these gifts each gift is meant to be used in service unto God and to one another that's the point of spiritual gifts that's why it's given by the Spirit of God it's not to make us better or superior or any other thing it's to bring us together it's to serve God and to serve one another the problem is too many people want to serve their own selves they want to pad their pockets with this gift they think they have it has nothing to do with you it isn't even it's supposed to make you better or puffed up it's all about God it's all about service to him and it's all about connecting to God and connecting to one another different kinds of service each gift is meant to be used in service to God to one another each manifestation of the gift is for the common good the common good that means all of us and when we lose sight of that when we get so wrapped up in I want this and I want that and I'm better than this and I'm better than you we get lost in it all and then it's sometimes it's best just to step back and go what what am I doing here where have I gotten lost in all of this you see an example for me is is I was around some people whom I love dearly still to this day and always will we were doing service together uh, at a camp and we were praying around the circle and they were of a different denomination than, than I am than we are or whatever and their their denomination so to speak uh, I don't know how else to put it they they uh, they heavily were influenced by this by the speaking in tongues and and they even told me uh, so much as that when you speak in tongues that validates you're saved and if you've never spoken in tongues then you're probably not saved and that sent a red flag poof, right up to me because I don't read that here what I do read is that no one gift is better than another and so you're going to say that speaking in tongues is the most important gift and it validates your salvation you're, you're lifting that 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 tongue that that gift higher than another I know it's, it's killing you for me to talk about tongues right now it's killing me not to talk about it but that's for next week believe me that's really deep it's not as deep as you might think but they all work together like the body look at yourself for a minute your hand can't do what your eye does your eye is not supposed to do what your ear does your ear is not supposed to do what your foot does and so on and so forth your body has to work together the parts of your body there's no one part of your body that's more important than another because they can't function without each other that's the whole concept of the next part of where we if we were to go into it today uh, it'll all come together is from 12 verse 12 to 26 you see it's the same God same spirit and the purpose is that we all are to work together to to accomplish a goal together and that is to serve the one true God together not apart not individually and not for our own self-service it should never point back to you and it should never be about the pat on the back it's always about who he is the one true God and it's funny how it always comes back to unity have you noticed that everything comes back to being unified being of one spirit why do you think that is because when we're divided we fall kind of sounds like some uh, forefathers who wrote the Constitution doesn't it 
We don't pick our gift. I already, it's almost like rehashing all of this. God is the one who distributes the gifts. All the different gifts there are, they're amazing. I, 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 will, I will tell you right now, I don't think that I've ever actually witnessed true tongues. I, I can't, I don't know that I have. I've never been in a church that's spoken in tongues. I've only seen it how uh, the news media, I saw the news report once about how they were talking about tongues, and I just throw that out. Because they trashed them. They made them look like complete fools. And we know now that editing makes that happen. So I don't believe anything TV says anymore. I've got to see it with my own eyes to believe it. I don't believe those, those television programs much anymore. But the one thing we need to understand about gifts of all, not, uh, not just that God gives it, because that is true. I think, do you get that? Does anybody else not get that? It's a spiritual gift. Where else would it come from? Does that make sense? That's almost common sense. But the biggest one is that God is the one who gives it and distributes it through the Spirit of God, through the Spirit. He distributes it, distributes it. He's the one who decides what you get. So, but the cool thing is, some people get way more than, well, well, many gifts. You don't just get one. Therefore, we're not supposed to be envious of what somebody else has, which also became a problem for me. I noticed I, I, some people blow me away in their discernment. Looking at Lori, sometimes she just has some discernment when we're praying, and she's, she'll just continue the prayer that maybe I might have missed or whatever. The Spirit just tells her, hey, you've got to say this. I don't know if I'm envious of that, but I, I, it's, it's, it's one of those things that's like, wow. Have you ever been around someone that just blew you away? It's like, whoa. It's amazing sometimes, and, and sometimes we want those things, but that's not what God has for us. And when we focus so much on that and we forget the fact that God has got a purpose for us in the gifts that we're going to be given, and that we are given, we need to rest in that and know that none of those gifts are more important than the other, and that they all work together. I had written down something, and I wanted you to kind of see this with me. I'll just read it to you from 1 Corinthians 12, 22, or 21. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you, and the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. <clears throat> 22, on the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And the parts that we think are less honorable, we treat with special honor. Or we treat with special honor. And the parts that are unpresentable are, are treated with special modesty. While our presentable parts need no special treatment, but God has combined the members of the body. Look around. That's you. That's me. And has given greater honor to the parts that lacked it, so that there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. Can I just say that's the biggest part of this? We need to be rejoicing with one another with the gifts that we have and through the gifts that we have. We need to fulfill the purpose and the calling of God for the church, and that is to reach the lost. Can you explain to me what other purpose there is other than when we're here, we're to edify? And some of these gifts are specifically for the church itself to edify and build this church up and to build his church up, to get us strengthened, to get us going. But others are to show other people that God is real and that he exists and that he loves them and that he died for them and that he rose from the dead for them so that they can have victory over sin and death and everything on this planet. But it won't happen unless we realize right there from that we all need to work together to be effective. That's key number one. And the biggest problem is a lot of people aren't working. They don't ever come to church except for Sunday morning. A long time ago, I don't remember all the message anymore. I don't remember my messages either, so I don't blame you. But there was one that I preached that said, don't, don't be a pew sitter. Get, get out of the pew and go do. I remember that. I may not remember all of it. That's why I do those little punny things. Get out of the pew and go do. This isn't where you're supposed to just be. And as a matter of fact, you're not just supposed to be in Bible studies and leave it there. You need to get out and use that Bible study that you're using and make it effective and reach other people. And make a difference. And Jude says, having compassion, making a difference. What difference are we making? 
I can tell you one thing. The world sees the division in the church. The world sees it. I'm going to tell you this. The world sees the division. I believe we reverse that. Kalinga sees the division in the church. Kalinga sees it. We need to get it right, you guys. We need to get it right. And we need to get past petty divisions. We need to get past that. We need to be open with each other. Because all parts are meant to work together. And we need to work together to be effective. Amen? So if we're going we're gonna to end with a... What song are we going to end with, Jared? You guys can come on up here. What, Jesus paid it all. He did pay it all. And he paid it all so that we could have it all. So if you don't mind, would you stand with me? And those who uh, are able to or would like to come up and be here available for anybody who might want to pray. I don't know if anybody's being led to be, come up and be prayed with. There's no, there's no shame in being prayed over. Uh, many of you may have uh, physical issues that you need prayer concerns over. Many of you may have other things happening in your life, and we'd like to pray with you. But specifically this morning as I pray, I'd ask that you prepare your heart for next week's message about the gifts. About what, what gifts and how and, and all of that. And perhaps read through chapter 12. Read the whole book of 1 Corinthians, but read chapter 12 and on the end of 13 and get a gist of why we do what we do and why we're supposed to do what we do. And the biggest reason we can do what we do is because Jesus paid it all. That's right. So may we look to the verses and may we look to the Bible, I mean, and see what God told us through his spirit and that we're supposed to be united, not divided. So can I pray for you right now? So Lord, I pray for everyone in this place and I pray that you would just minister to each and every one of us in this in this in this room and, and those who weren't able to make it today whether they're traveling out who knows why and, and what but God would your spirit speak to them too and God would you guide us to that place of unity not division would you guide us to that place where we, we all use the gift that you've given us or the gifts that you've given us Lord talents are great and they're wonderful but God the God given gifts that you, you, you enable us as a spirit born new person in Christ would you make those things evident would you show us what they are and would you help us to live them out in service to you and to one another God may we reach out beyond ourselves and to other people God may they see a true a truly united church not divided so God this can only be done in your service and in your spirit so it's in the name of Jesus that I pray all this and everyone says. So we're just gonna we're just gonna sit here for a couple of minutes. If you want to come pray, come up and pray as we sing Jesus paid it all. I heard the Savior say thy strength indeed is long, child of we. Watch and pray, find in me thine all in all. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. He
my lips shall still Fantastic song that makes me think about Jay Vernon McGee every time I hear it. If you don't know who he is, look him up. He's fantastic. Um, listen, you guys, don't leave this place defeated. When you go home today, get on your knees if God's been talking to you and just let him, let him deal with you. So let's pray as you guys go home. Have an outstanding day, I hope, and a great lunch, but let's pray for it. So, Lord, we just pray today. We thank you for this glorious day. We pray that you would draw a lot of people to us, to this church. And specifically to you, God. Would, you, would we be lighthouses for you when we leave this place? Would people see your son Jesus through us? In every place we go, whether it be restaurants, whether it be home, school, work, whatever. And God, would you help us to find that spiritual gift that you gifted us all, each of us something different. And may we use it to further your good and to serve you. Lord, thank you for this day. Keep us all safe. Bless all the times that we're going to have today, God. We love you so much. We praise you for it. It's in Jesus' precious name we pray and we all say. Amen. Amen.